Hi, I'm Phil from Driftworks. This is my buddy Jay, and this is my 964 Turbo. The last couple of episodes you've seen is fitting the new engine built by Fernsport and getting all the associated stuff sorted around it to get it running and we do have it running on a base map on the Haltec ECU at the moment. Uh, we're still waiting for it to go for mapping, shouldn't be too long, we're now looking at about 10 days until we have to do that. Uh, one of the things that you have noticed and possibly seen me talk about is the fact that something's missing here and that's the uh, air conditioning compressor that used to sit just here looking all ugly and heavy and stuff. So the reason that's missing, because I would not be without aircon, even in our very mild <laughs> summered country. Um, yeah, I need aircon in my life. Uh, we have a lovely package from Classic Retrofit. So this is an electric air conditioning compressor um, and kit of some kind. I don't know exactly what's in this box, but we're going to open it up and have a look at what it's going to take to get it fitted to this. There we go, that's the core of the kit. One electric compressor. On the Classic Retrofit website, comprehensive instructions. So yeah, bear with me for 30 minutes. <laughs> just read this so we try and make as few mistakes as possible. And just to complicate things even further, I've got this um, heater box, which is from, I think it's from T7 Design. So basically we're going to put this in alongside the air conditioning um, so we can have heat and cold. No cold feet on the motorway anymore. Yeah, well, I don't think this is, <laughs> it's not going to be like a, a proper water-cooled engine heater, is it? But I think it'll take the edge off because awesome. I've done a couple of trips to Bicester and places like that in, uh, in this car during actual winter, sort of Januarys, Februarys. And uh, yeah, it's not the most pleasant experience. <laughs> so uh, you need some big socks. Yeah, well, I tried that, but even that doesn't work. Big thermal socks, like boots. There's something about it. I don't know. Just being in a metal thing, traveling down the road, it is so cold. So yeah, hopefully a little bit of luxury. Uh, one of the great things about um, fitting this now alongside the uh, air conditioning is that um, we now have the correct amperage alternator to power either of these. Obviously, they're never gonna be running at the same time is the idea. So yeah, either the alternator will provide enough power to run the AC or it'll provide enough power to run this. So fingers crossed it all works out, but obviously, as usual, it's not just a case of following the lovely instructions on how to fit AC. We've got a bit of a uh, Driftworks complication thrown into the mix. <laughs> okay, that's everything out of the box. Really, really well packaged. Um, yeah, lots and lots of fancy stuff, fancy fittings. Uh, I don't know. We're gonna learn. Yeah, nicely machined pieces, kind of like OEM looking fittings for a lot of this as well, which is also a really nice sign. Um, Fancy ECU. So yeah, we're gonna kind of learn as we go along by reading the instructions. And job one looks like we need to go to the front of the car and mount this block. So we decided to remove the bonnet, make a bit of space for our fat heads to get to this here. Um, we've already undone it. So yeah, it's just a 10 mil box. Just about squeeze it out without taking the whole front of the car apart. Yeah, it's a bit nice. of a squeeze and there's no guarantee we're gonna get the new piece in there, but um, I'm just following these original lines here down into the wheel well here and undoing some more stuff here. So yesterday, I left at about half three to go and edit uh, Craig's latest Pajero video. And I got uh, this picture, this live picture from uh, Rich. <laughs> This is Jay doing the simple next part of the job, which is fitting a little temperature sensor um, into the evaporator, the basically the radiator that sits inside the car. And um, yeah, it escalated a little bit, didn't it? Yeah, did we send you a picture of me taking a shower in petrol? <laughs> you did, and why was that? 
because we had it to drain the tank. And you what, just filled up. Yeah, Jay didn't realise that I, on Friday, had absolutely brimmed the tank to dilute what uh, remained in there, which was very, very little, like way less than a quarter of a tank. It had been in there for a year, the petrol had, so I filled it right to the top. Yeah. And yeah, then Jay thought he was going to take it all out with one can. Well, I thought, well last time I saw the gauge, he had a quarter of a tank. So I was like, ah, I went for it to drink the dig, but. I've been, I've been doing like miles of mapping. Oh, well. And well. Yeah, it's stuck. But yeah, there is now a massive. Four cans of. <laughs> Four, four cans of fuel over there. And the rest has evaporated off the floor. Oh, it stank. <laughs> it stank. I had to leave my clothes downstairs last night. I didn't want to know I'd get shouted up for that. So yeah, so yeah this is, um, I mean, I don't think it's, I mean, it's listed as not massively complex, this job. Would you agree? But not complex, just but, fiddly. Yeah, there's lots to do. Well, unless for any time you have to deal with a heater box on a car, it's always a terrible day, isn't it? So, it is, and especially yeah. sort of a late 80s, early 90s design airbox, which has so many little servo motors and little pipes coming from everywhere, and the fact that obviously it's an air-cooled engine, so it has originally has a pipe that runs off the exhaust. There's like a collector on the manif sound of manifold that sends hot air through a pipe that goes through kind of the sill. Like a beetle? Up through here, exactly like a beetle, behind there, up into the airbox. So it's a very complicated design, but kind of well-proven, like you say, even on beetles. Yeah. Just the modern version of it, and uh, yeah. So we're, uh, you've sort of got a couple more bolts and we're about oh, to whip this I think I'll just drop one down the back of the dash, which is brilliant. <laughs> and then um, I, think it's, I think it's out. I mean, you can pull it and see. But... Let's have a look. Uh, we'll just have a quick survey whilst we're waiting for Jay to do that bolt. Have a look at what this car looks like underneath the fuel tank. It is about as close to immaculate as any car, I'd, you know, any 90s car. I've ever seen so. It certainly hasn't been in England long, has it? Well, yeah, but it must have been dry stored in Japan. Oh, like, it's, it's so, so nice underneath here, and it's never had any crash damage or anything like that. So, yeah, it's definitely something I am uh, keen to look after and treasure for a very long time with its new posh aircon and Hopefully. heater. Hopefully. <laughs> when is it loose in any way? It it's going to have to tight. pop up surely off this. Feels pretty damn tight to me. It does. Let me just double check the instructions again. In case I've missed something. We need a Ren and Stimpy two hours later. Oh, is that where <laughs> those things come from? <laughs> Honestly. Much like every single new car you ever work on, you've got to kind of find your way and work out all its uh, little intricacies. But yeah, that's that's probably been a good hour since the last bit. I bet of it has to be fair, yeah. yeah but we've try and get this out disconnected the bits under the dash thing. now. Yeah, but this is looking like it's coming now. Off the studs. What a battle! Is it? I don't Have I know. I've spoken too soon. Watch this. This is wedge. I need to put the camera down. Help me. Yeah. Ha! We have absolutely destroyed the entire workshop. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> was it one day? Was it tidy yesterday morning? It was? Yes. Yeah, because we finished, we kind of felt like we'd got to a point where it was time to tidy up properly because they're like coming to finished. the end of the job. Yeah. Uh, and now it is currently 10 minutes past three <laughs> and we only just got this out just before lunch. So, <sighs> what a battle. Right, evaporator, although old, is actually in really good condition. I hope we don't regret this. Yeah, well, we know how to do it now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what a battle it is to get to this point, but once you do, this slots out quite easily, then you can just see whether it's rotten at the bottom or not, and this isn't. So Jay's made a really tidy um, bit of routing for the sensors here. Uh, have you arrow bited them in? Did you uh, just I a bit put a bit on that one. Yeah. Just because I'm scared it's going to fall out. Yeah, yeah. so one of, them, clipped in. one of them actually goes in, in the fins, and we put a bit of glue there, and this one's in there. Yeah, I think there. that one stops that from freezing, and that yeah. one just is a, is it just an air temp sensor. So. Yeah, so if anybody from um, Classic Retrofit um, thinks that we've done this wrong, don't tell us, please. Because <laughs> this is how it is. <laughs> yeah, because it's how it's Because, <laughs> yeah, getting, getting to this. Oh, God. Ta-da! <laughs> And the reason you haven't seen anything is because... It was the that, same as when we took it out, but backwards. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Fight. 
then fight again, yeah, yeah. then scream and fight, then drop a nut or a screw, and then eventually, at the end of yesterday slash this morning... It's back in. <laughs> <laughs> Just a bit too senseless. <laughs> yeah, we, uh, we've got a new fan um, for this side. We, um, we'd al I'd already replaced that one on that side. It wasn't much fun yeah. in the car, so at this point, we'll put a new one in that side. Indeed, yeah. The um, reason you replace them is because they get squealy and horrible. Really, really, really annoying. And um, we've just gone for aftermarket versions from Design 911 because the originals are 840 quid ex vat each. Yeah, they're a lot. <laughs> it's like it's, for a fan. It's just an old fashioned fan. It's madness, isn't it? Yeah. Isn't it? Um, but yeah, you can see the posh new bits um, here that come with the um, classic retrofit aircon system. And we're going to now run the pipes, which just run here, and do all the routing for the rest of it. And hopefully. Hopefully that's the bad bit out of the way anyway. Yeah, I really the think rest it should be. It's pretty straightforward. Yeah, yeah. It's, it does. Yeah, fingers yeah. crossed. Fingers <laughs> crossed. Famous last words. <laughs> So I decided it wasn't worth running any ca uh, any hoses until all the pieces were in place and we knew we were aiming. So we decided it's time to fit the uh, compressor. Yep, and this is just two holes that we've got to drill. We think I think we've got that right, haven't we? Looks and like then, it. So what are these threaded bits for? That the, the mount compressor, the compressor to that, yeah. yeah, and this and then bracket three holes. Yeah, yeah. Got, gotcha. Okay. Simple. So uh, yeah, just going to you know, take a drill to my car. Get that camera on to watch me snap the drill bits. Yeah, don't snap this. This is one of the good bits. Yeah, yeah we treated ourselves to some uh, dormer drill bits, are they? Yeah, they're really good. They're really good. We've snapped one and remembered to replace it we as have, well. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. It was only a three mil, it was only a baby, wasn't it? Yeah. This one's a little bit awkward because of the angle, but. Ah, the grand. This is an exciting video, isn't it? It's like, it's like action, we never normally do action. We normally just talk about action. I've remembered to pick the camera up. <laughs> I mean, this is some quality drilling going on here. I, you know, I have to say that. This is engineering. It is, this is engineering, you're correct. On, <laughs> this is the laziness of not picking up the smaller drill bit to start off with. <laughs> Three. Oh, that was drama, wasn't it? <laughs> Better paint it. So we've had a relatively productive day on this. We've got one of the condensers mounted here. Um, Jay's just been making a bracket for this. It does come with these brackets, uh, but for some reason doesn't fit our car perfectly. Potentially because of RWB-ness, but you know, who knows? We had to modify this bracket that comes with the kit ever so slightly, but it fits really nicely now. Um, just got to do a bit of paint work there. I'll be making all of these lines and this is the other condenser here which currently ha hasn't got a bracket on but sits flush to the oil cooler um, and we've made some sort of foam pads in between it uh, to sandwich it properly and these lines are really good the, um, that are supplied with the kit, the crimp on lines. I'm just running them um, to the correct length at the moment with temporary fixings, cable ties until I get the uh, some more P-clips like that one there. But yeah, uh, and the dryer's there, and then that goes up into the engine, or in, so the engine bay. <laughs> yeah, it goes up here into the engine bay to uh, terminate the top ones there. But I've got the hot side to do. Um, sorry, the l low pressure, isn't it? The high, the big pipes, they're low pressure. So I've got that to do as well, but it's coming, in, coming on quite nicely. Still a lot of wiring to do though, eh? Yeah, and wait. we need to wait for the right plug to turn up as yeah. well for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, no, it's all coming along. It is a, um, fair to say, it's a pretty big job, this, though. Another day or so since we last filmed. Another day or so, yeah. I've <laughs> um, got some nice brackets holding the condenser on now. This one's not on on this side at the moment, but Jay's nearly finished with the wiring. Yeah, one more connection. Yeah, one, one more connection to that. I've just been making a bracket. I've just made this lovely piece here which supports this relay here we've had to drill a couple of holes into the car with some grommets but um, that's the power for the main pump underneath and I've just riv nutted into into the car just down here but yeah I think we're kind of 
well, we kind of have to be almost done, don't it's we? It's got to be on the trailer this afternoon, it hasn't has, it? Yeah, yeah, because it's mapping time tomorrow. Off um, to Dino tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. So we're, um, yeah, we absolutely have to finish tidying this up, regardless of whether this is actually completely buttoned up or finished in terms of the air con. But, uh, yeah, I doubt we'll have time to gas it. But yeah, we're not going to actually have um, time to have air con on whilst mapping the car. No. <laughs> okay, the bumper's back on. Must be serious. Must be committed, AJ. Getting close. Yeah. So yeah, fits reasonably nicely in there um, on this side. This side, I'm not sure if it was optional or advised or what, but um, yeah, decided to go for it anyway. The second condenser it sits behind the standard oil cooler there. We've had to create kind of uh, a new shield at the back because it's quite important that you still get all the air directed from the front of the car through the oil cooler and through the condenser in front of it. So hopefully that doesn't affect oil temperatures too badly. Shouldn't do though, really. Uh, and we've made a massive point of making sure that it doesn't rub against anything as well. Um, because when they're sandwiched together, there's a good chance of causing problems if you don't do that properly. So yeah, that's that side. Um, and this is the side with the new fan that comes with it, which is quite a tidy piece of kit. Uh, it's got shrouding at the top here. It kind of is a little bit open at the back, just here. Um, but it shouldn't be a problem because most of the air will be pulled through with the fan when it's on anyway. Um, we've had to do quite a bit of sort of finding and making brackets and P-clips uh, for all of the pipe work, but it's, it's turned out all right. It's turned out pretty nicely up here as your fill points um, for high and low. Uh, this is mounted at the back here, and the dryer has turned out pretty nicely. Like I say, everything seems to have turned out pretty nicely. It just seems to have taken a year and a day to do, doesn't it's taken it? Taken us a while. Isn't it? <laughs> yeah, uh, and here is all pretty much done. We haven't quite finished, but uh, with the bracket in and the ECU for the aircon mounted, it's looking pretty tidy. Uh, we've still got to get the front trim in. We are not going to have time, unfortunately, to gas it up in this episode because we are desperately trying to get the car on the trailer ready for mapping tomorrow. Obviously, priorities, getting the car running and uh, able to do massive burnouts is more important than <laughs> getting the aircon working. <laughs> yeah, maybe not massive burnouts straight away, but just working and not being worried I'm going to blow it up would be nice. Yeah. So yeah, we're off to Pro Tuna tomorrow. All right, we're back after our mapping session successful ish but you'll see more on that in the next video uh car's back on the ramp the other way around uh we just finished up a few little bits and pieces and jay read some more instructions uh, we've configured the aircon ecu now yeah um or best we can anyway yeah and uh, look we have some ac gas ac machine and pipes running up to this so First time I've ever done this, obviously. Yeah. We just borrowed it from Craig, but it's the first time he's ever done it as yeah, well, so isn't it? It's completely <laughs> random for all of us, but. So yeah, we're just uh, attempting to sort of model our way through. Oh, is that gonna focus? Yeah. We're doing a 45 minute vacuum test on the pipes. I think that's something that's required to then dump the fluid in. Or gas, sorry, yeah, not fluid. Fluid gas. And uh, yeah, fingers crossed for us. We'll, yeah. we'll let you know how we get on. There we go, all done. Gassed up apparently. Jay's just... Hacking. Ha yeah, hacking, computer hacking skills. Yeah, okay. MS-DOS skills, yeah? Yeah, <laughs> I've got nunchuck skills. Yeah. Oh, fancy. They just test procedures and stuff. Oh, throw some air. Throw some air. Yeah. What else can you... You can turn on the main contact. Uh, what's that one? No, no, you can if you do it right. You've got to type in commands each time. Uh, yeah. Click. So is that the main relay? That's the main relay. Oh, okay. And you think you can turn on the compressor as well. CMP. Ooh, high pitch noise. Does that sound like a compressor? I don't know if that's good or bad. But it's doing something. <laughs> it's it. That's really high pitched, isn't it? I guess when the engine's running, you probably won't hear it, but yeah. Dogs work. Oh. oh, there we go. What's that noise? There we go, warming up. I don't so know if we should do this actually. Plane taking off. Turn it off. I'm, we're I'm scared. Yeah, I'm going to do it when the engine's running. I don't want to break. I don't want to pop a 
hose in my face or anything. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, there's a few settings that you've got to uh, put into this to tell it what um, amperage alternator you've got and all sorts of stuff like that. It's a very clever bit of kit. Um, are we ready to actually? I think we're fire ready it up? to try it. Yeah, everything's okay. configured. Let's do it. Let's uh, let's check this fresh cold start as well. I don't know if I should. Yeah, I can leave this on and hit the diagram. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to click that. You ready? Yeah. You definitely ain't hearing anything now. <laughs> what? Turn the switch on. So how many amps was that pulling, you say? It was pulling, hang on, let's stop this so it doesn't just fill with zeros. It was pulling 52 amps at the compressor. Yeah, so that's why you need the uprated alternator. That's yeah, a lot. We, we, we lost a good volt off the, off the uh, alternator current by turning it on. So it went down to about 13 and a half, you say? Yeah, yeah. Yeah? So that's still obviously fine. Yeah, yeah. No, that's amazing. That's um, so, great success, I'd say. I'd say so. <laughs> all, all we need is the setting for our alternator. So we need to speak to them. Oh, yes, I yeah, did yeah. just ring, but it went to answer phase. So yeah. I'll try again. Um, but as long as it works. Yeah, man. We're going to call that complete. I'm going to say it's complete. It's pretty, good. <laughs> it's pretty damn good. Yeah. It's actually, I'm really pleased with it. It's not obtrusively loud. Like they um, put the electric power steering pump in, that became a bit noisy. Yeah. Got to do some work to try and quieten that down. But actually, that seems to be. Really well, I mean, it'd, be not, it'd be interesting to see what it does on a hot day. Uh, yeah, that's at the end of the day, we're testing this on a day that's 18 degrees in here. 17 or 18 yeah, degrees. Yeah, but 17 or 18 degrees in this building is not really the full test of an AC system, but it certainly seems like it's um, you know, going to work on those hot days. We will see. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, yeah, huge thank you to Classic Retrofit um, for making a kit. It's pretty damn comprehensive. Don't get me wrong, it's a big job to fit it. Um, and there's some stuff that you have to make yourself, like in decisions that you make along the way that are kind of choices that you make for your individual application, your individual car. But now it uh, seems like a really good bit of kit. So uh, I'll obviously report back once we drive it on a hot summer's day. I know some of you are laughing at us being in the UK and talking about hot summer's day, but <laughs> <laughs> we do get them. I promise you, we do get them. You know, get two at, or least, three, at least yeah. two or three. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, that'll do it for now. So uh, yeah, thanks very much for watching. Um, make sure you subscribe because the next video is the Dyno Run, which went pretty well with this car. It's a bit more exciting than that car. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But uh, it's all part of building the perfect package. You know, you know what my opinion of a perfect package is as a 40-something-year-old middle-aged person. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, thanks very much for watching. Give us a like if you enjoyed and uh, yeah, buy something from the Driftworks shop or something. <laughs> Cheers, bye.